I do think it's interesting that, I mean, Russian deterrence no longer seems to stand up to um, the Americans, the Europeans, others providing longer range missiles, F-16s, all of these things. I, I have seen uh, growing levels of uh, saber rattling, nuclear saber rattling from people like former Premier President Medvedev, some from President Putin himself. And I'm wondering how you think about the Russian nuclear force slash deterrent, the largest in the world, and the role that it does or should play? Well, I think that uh, one of the surprises of this, uh, of this entire conflict was uh, the uh, uh, inability of uh, Russia's uh, nuclear deterrent to keep the United States from intervening uh, in a proxy conflict, in a proxy war, in an area of uh, utmost strategic importance to Russia. Ukraine is a huge place. It's, uh, it's the largest country in Europe outside of yeah. Russia. It's a country that is led by a virulently anti-Russian regime, which, which has been in existence since uh, 2014. This uh, conflict started eight years back or nine years back. And uh, it's been uh, a conflict, uh, uh, low level, low intensity conflict, waged uh, mostly in eastern Ukraine. This conflict uh, did not start uh, out of the blue on the 24th of February. It has at least a nine year history preceding it. And, uh, and if you look back, uh, um, uh, a decade before that, uh, you, you you can see that uh, uh, this whole business of Ukraine being uh, um, invited to NATO, being uh, conditioned be, be, with the elite being uh, drawn into the Western camp. Uh, this was a challenge that essentially no Russian leadership would have would have been able to tolerate. So again, the Ukrainians should not, a country should not have a sovereign right to decide which strategic alliances it wishes to be a part of. That's, that's the perspective, right? When, uh, when the Ukrainian leadership was uh, uh, in negotiating uh, NATO membership for Ukraine, the idea of NATO membership was supported by a minority within Ukraine. And yet the leadership uh, was very much pushing that forward. Now, again, uh, various countries can take uh, various leaderships and various countries can take various decisions. But right. each decision carries a price. And that, that applies to Russia, that applies to the United States, that applies to Ukraine. And uh, what I see today and what worries me most today is that the trajectory of the Ukraine crisis, I see this trajectory taking us all and I and I I mean you and me as well, toward a, a direct a military collision between Russia and NATO. And if there is such a collision, then um, you know an exchange, a nuclear exchange between Russia and the United States may not be seen as a fantasy.